notion of taking on this story was so frightening on some level because you know Steve sort of he, he you know he really became at one point so much bigger than himself he became so much associated with his products that we all have so to try to tell the story of a of a character that was in and of himself an enigma it was so 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 hard to get a hold of who he really was um, yet he represents so much and for me I wanted to try to find a way though not answer every question, especially the questions we don't know, but give the audience a sense of who he was, a feeling of the character. So by the end, the sub, sort of the sum total of the whole movie would leave an impression. And I just think that there are very few of these, these, Steve, these men in our, in our history that really, that, that sort of move the needle in the way that he did, um, and yet, we relate to him because he came from a very con sort of contemporary place that we all relate to. So uh, it was a mountain, but um, it was sort of once you started climbing, you just sort of had you had to keep going. Now, Ashton, this is one of the great minds of recent American history. Uh, tell us about the journey of taking on this role and and how you how you made it happen, how you how you took it on. Oh well, well, well hi everyone. Uh, <laughs> For, for, first of all, it was um, it's it was terrifying. Okay, honestly, and 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 I think the the thing that um, yeah, you know you portray someone like this. I don't think you can ever really play them. I think you can portray them, and you can you have your lens by which you can see them, and then you try to interpret uh, where they came from and why they did the things they did and how they did the things they did, but. You're really only portraying them through the lens that that you're that's available to you, um, and thankfully, because he's uh, an icon, and, and though he's passed away, he's still living uh, very much in the zeitgeist and very much in the minds and hearts of people who were his friends and colleagues. There were there was a massive amount of resources that were available um, to uh, to to go into it with. You know, there's there's tons of video footage and audio files, hundreds of hours of audio files that you can, that you can pick up and, and, and start to get, to get an understanding of who he is. But when you look at that stuff, generally um, what you find is what he wanted you to think he was, which is very different than, than maybe who he was. Um, and in order to get to that, um, I reached out to a bunch of very close friends to his and, and, and spent time with them. Um, and, then, uh, and then Josh and I really, just dug in on uh, you know who this guy is, what he wants, um, how is he, um, what's his what's his his true desire, um, and what's the kind of hole in his heart that he's trying to fill, uh, and then, and and always tried to anchor the guy even when he was doing what seemed like malicious things, to anchor it to to the the need to be loved, and and that you know his his proxy his means of being loved by other people was through creating things that people loved. And when people loved the things he created, he felt loved. Um, and we sort of found that thread and found that chord and, and just started pulling on it. Now let's take a few questions from the audience. Uh, right there. Thank you, thank you. Well, I mean, I think that given the, given what the, the content was, there was going to be an obvious comparison just because of, of who we were dealing with. But I made a conscious choice to try to stay away. I mean, not trying to use electronic or music throughout and all that kind of thing. But I really all, I didn't approach it that way. I didn't really try to keep any sort of influence. It, you know, and as a director, when I first approached it, I really thought, well, how are we going to do this? I first started thinking we got to get really tricky. Like, what's it? We let's get into the head of Steve, and we'll go into a weird Steve cam where the world disappears, and we really find out what Steve was thinking in that moment in the wardrobe. Which was, of course, as a director, you start to go, how big can you make this? And then, but very early on, even when we just first started meeting, I, I 
really instantly knew it was about staying away and letting it just play out, you know. And going back to what the original question was, there's a scene in the movie where he turns the iMac around, which is that blue computer. And I think for a lot of people, especially the younger generation, that was the first computer they associate with the Mac, which is that blue, bondy, blue kind of like pod. And I remember thinking people have almost no concept of what happened all the way up to that moment. Because what happened after that moment is history, because it was sort of, it sort of took on a life of its own, Mac did. It was sort of a fairy tale after that. So there was something really interesting about sort of the sort of uh, the, the palace intrigue of the corporation and the business of vision and what one has to do, especially when it's technology that hadn't, wasn't really there yet. Um, so. Yeah, it felt, sorry, but it felt like it was more about grown-ups than the social network. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Right here. Well, usually when you're playing a character, no matter what character it is, in, in some ways you're doing somebody. Um, the benefit of, of uh, playing characters that people don't know is they don't know, and so they don't know when you mess up. Um, and which, so I, you know, I can play my cousin in a character, and nobody knows if I'm doing a good job of playing my cousin or not. Um, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Excuse me, sir. We're doing. We're in the midst of the. Um, uh, you know, but playing this particular character, I think the biggest pressure behind it is that. Yeah, you know, people, and I, and I think Josh probably had the same thing, which is, people actually have seen this guy talk. It's not like you're playing Abe Lincoln or something that was a. It's a real life character that like I don't know what the fuck Abe Lincoln sounded like. Like I have no idea. I don't know how he walked. I don't know how he talked just as intimidating to play, but you know, there's video footage of this guy. And the, and the impressed image that people have in his head is Steve Jobs giving a keynote that is uh, you know, talking about you know, the iPod or the iPhone or whatever it is, um, because I think that that's, that, that's really the, the enduring image that most people have of him. And so trying to authentically play him as the guy who I found when I started digging and finding like footage of him, him at like 25 years old and he's like, oh, am I on TV right now? Is there, are the cameras rolling? Which there's actual like footage of that stuff as well. And then the hippie version of him even before that and trying to sort of become the guy that became the guy that we knew that, you know, bowed and did, and, you know, and you, you know, sort of learn and, 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 and pick up the little things of like when he, he went to India that he probably got, you know, his kind of humble, like when he namaste people when he was on stage, well he probably picked that up when he was in, in India, and like, and starting to put the threads through the little pieces of how he became that guy who's the enduring image. That was, um, that was probably the most challenging thing. And, and, and secondary to that, I have a lot of friends and colleagues and coworkers and people I work with on a daily basis that actually knew him and have like a real personal relationship to him. And um, I didn't want to disappoint them. Like I didn't want to like hurt their feelings, and I didn't want to um, uh, create an image of this guy that um, they saw as fraudulent. So I put a lot of pressure on myself to do that and do it well. And I think Josh, you know, it's also interesting because Josh played, you know, Wozniak, who's very much a pop culture figure even now. Yeah. So I mean, you want to talk about being Woz? Because I thought that was. I what just I watched Dancing with the Stars over and over. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> until I really got the, the proper gait down. Uh, and then I just studied Ashton Kutcher's cousin for a long time. <laughs> Filled in the gaps. Uh, no, I think that to uh, Ashton's point, you know, there's, there is a sense of, uh, put it this way, how many of you have seen video of Truman Capote? Raise your hand. Real video of Truman Capote, okay. How many of you have seen video of uh, Freda Kahlo? Raise your hands. I knew it would be you. I knew it would be you. This goody goody two shoes over there. I've seen every yes. documentary video ever made. I saw the last video of Abraham Lincoln before he was shot. Uh, now, how many of you have seen video of Steve Jobs? Okay, and Steve Wozniak. Okay, so you have this unbelievable 
you know, sense of, oh my God, I can't, I can't be a fraud. It, people will look at you and say, well, he didn't sound like that, he didn't walk like that, he didn't talk like that. And then to the same degree, you can't get a face transplant, you can't get a voice transplant. So you have to approximate what that person, what the essence of that person is. And I think that, you know, our job as storytellers is to do all the work. And there were literally hundreds of hours of work that we did to approximate it and then let it go and then tell the story as the director envisions it, as the writer envisions it. And, and that is, you know, our journey. As we were talking about this, I mean, I was thinking, musing on this earlier that, you know, the night before you're about to shoot a scene, you know it's a pivotal scene, you know you gotta be there at 6 a.m., you know it's the most emotional uh, moment and a cathartic moment of the movie, and if you arrive on the day and are not there and focused and in the moment and we have to move on, you didn't get it, and forever the film will, will live without that moment because you weren't there. It's a very sort of, ang and now you add to that level that you're portraying somebody and you're trying to like get a sense of the character and am I him, am I, is that Steve? And you know, there were a lot of moments with Ashton, for example, there's that scene where he fires the guy in the Lisa lab, and it was a very long scene, and we covered it for a very long time, and you know, I really felt he, he nailed it. But I, you know, I could see Ashton in the corner, it's that thing the actor gets when he's sort of like, he's sitting there, and he just says, and you go up there, you know, he, he, he's trying, he's trying to find that moment, and it, you know, it's, it, it's a strange, Thing because you're not only worrying about living the character, but you're trying to also live a character that your that your conscious mind can't divorce itself from, which is that he that am I that guy, the guy that you will know, and and that's a scene where no matter what I say, because I felt I think he had gotten it, he still felt a little unsettled about it, because you know, and that was that's the process. It's it's, it's and I think with with uh, Josh too, there were many moments where it's like. It was a too much, it was a too little, and a lot of that comes from our own, you know, the actors are sort of self-editing, so it, it, to do these movies, to do any movie, you have to f be fully in, but to do this movie, you know, the fear that Ashton was talking about also comes to try to traverse that expectation that you, that you should try to let go, but is always sort of out there, I mean, it's the back of your mind. Other questions? Yeah. Um, back there? Um, you know, uh, I, I, Josh gave me the script. We, we sat down at, at lunch uh, one day and, and, you know, he looked at me and he said, and I think he had questions about me, and I had questions about, we were kind of like testing each other out. And um, I, you know, I got the script and I was like, I'm scared of this. I'm terrified of this. This is like, you know, a little like, oh, shit, they're really going to see my real colors now. And that excited me, you know? You get that, like, those butterflies in your stomach that, that, that you're gonna go into the abyss, you're gonna take the leap. And I think that as an actor, you wanna keep challenging yourself because otherwise you're, you're never gonna grow. Um, and, you know, I think to a certain extent, it was a relief to get to play something like this because I felt a, a sense of, like, I was able to take the shackles off of what, how people generally see me as a, a really funny guy um, or, or not a very funny guy. Um, and to do something like this, now they can say, oh, he's, he's really skilled as a dramatic actor or he's terrible as a dramatic actor. It changes the dialogue. And I think that that's exciting as a performer. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, I, you know, but I've done some dramatic roles before, um, and a lot of comedic roles before, and it's interesting, like, and I get this question a lot, and then the other question I get is, you know, what do you like more, like doing TV, or do you like doing movies? And it's, it's funny, because they're equally challenging in their own ways. Um, you know, once you've heard a joke, it tends to be less funny the next time you hear it, and so, you know, like, 
grinding as a community to come up with like fresh material that is going to be funny again and again and again really ultimately comes down to I found for the for the most part like playing a character that's an authentic character in situations that allow that character to be funny and then dramatic roles you're playing a character that is an authentic character in high pressure dramatized situations but what you're trying to do ultimately every time is relatively the same um, from a process point of view is is um, you're trying to portray a character in, an, in, a, in a way that you feel is authentic to that character. Um, and if it happens to be funny, then we call it comedy. And if it happens to be dramatic, we call it drama. But it's, it's largely the same process with different pressures. Like doing a live television show where you get a script on Monday, and then you get a new script on Tuesday, and a new script on Wednesday. And then you finally get maybe what might be a locked script on Thursday, and you get the actual locked script of 40 pages that you have to memorize and perform in front of a live studio audience on Friday night is just as pressure packed as what showing up at, and doing an emotional scene at 6 AM is, just in a slightly different way. Um, and, and they're both equally really rewarding when you do it well. I mean, I also think that if you know comedians, at least this is my impression, is that they're actually extremely brooding, serious, and that comedy, in my opinion, tends to be usually originally a response. It's it's a defense towards something that, and it's usually whatever they're whatever has happened or how they process life that their comedy comes as sort of a response to that thing. But that thing, which was the germ of it is usually very alive and, 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 and sort of, you know, full of introspection. And uh, if you can tap into that, uh, I think it's actually a, very powerful. Um, and you have to just recognize that. And I also think on some level, when actors start off, they, they are, their career is going a certain way, and then it takes a left or a right turn, and then a storyline is told. And at some point, they're kind of on that storyline, and they start to, you start to believe it. But in my opinion, as a director, you're, you're an actor regardless of what the last five or six things you've done. If you're right, you're right. You know, um, As long as, as Josh was saying, that we, we sort of know where the character is going, we have that, you know, that, that discussion. But um, I mean, I personally find that people who have done comedy tend to actually have a pretty acute awareness of sadness and, 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 you know, and introspection and all those, all those other dramatic sort of attributes. I think I've got time for one more, sir. Uh, the fidgeting that you're doing, Matt, was that, was that you in the movie, really? Or was that part of Steve Jobs? Because I noticed that in the movie that he did a lot of fidgeting, and they got that on camera. So <laughs> fidgeting. Um, well, I actually saw, um, there was a, a really cool um, piece, and it was cool to me when I was studying the guy. Um, the, Merrill Lynch did this like coverage on Steve Jobs when he was about 30 years old. And they did this, he, he, was, he was actually building Next at the time. And uh, he brought like, you know, Paul Rand in to like, develop a design logo, and they sort of covered him <laughs> over the process of developing the Next open step. Um, processing system and, and building the computer and there's this really cool it's like 15 minute piece of footage on him and I started to notice that he was he, he had like this frenetic energy where he was like shaking his leg quite a bit and um, and, I, and and because there were really subtle moments so there was this Steve Jobs that was turned on and knew it was being filmed that was pretty collected and cool and then there was the Steve Jobs that didn't know it was being filmed and in that in the one that he didn't know it was being filmed like a, he was always playing with uh, his uh, ch it, his uh, whiteboard marker and, and doing things with it and had uh, certain postures and hand gestures that he would constantly do and, and when he counted he would count specifically. I started to pick up like some of those like little specific details and then when I met with um, his friend Avi Tavanian um, I started just kind of going into character a little bit and asking him like, did Steve really like? Would, did you ever notice him doing? He's like, oh, all the time. Like he always did that and um, the hand gestures and the various things. And he you know, like would throw the whiteboard marker down on the ground and like pout out of the room and like just, like various little tiny details that I 
happened to catch in some video footage and then confirmed with some of his friends um, that were behaviors that were his. Um, and then I just started like practicing them and doing them all the time. And then now I can't stop doing it. It's like, it's easy. you pick up these weird things and then and now, so now I sit at home and I do this and somebody grabs my leg and goes, stop doing that, you're shaking the whole table. Like, fucking stop it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then it, you kind of- and, like, you know, and the people who saw the movie, you know, like Ashton also studied Jobs' as walk, which was sort of a, a, lope, a lope. And it was great. And, you know, and people who knew Steve, a lot of this characterization, which seems simple, but I mean, did a lot of hand stuff. We had to tone some of it down on some level. I mean, I would because because Steve was very, you know, you know what you did, you know. So that was all very much out of studying him. Thank you, gentlemen. How about a round of applause for these two guys?